Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last lesson we have scaffolded the skeleton of our first effects class. Let's now explain what the actions observable is and how can we derive side effects from it. We have here the actions observable which is going to be emitting a new value each time that an action gets dispatched. For example, whenever we log into our application and we dispatch the login action, this actions observable is going to be emitting a value which is the login action itself. If we log out, we are going to get here as value the logout action and so forth. So we are going to go ahead and generate a side effect to the login class. We are going to take the login payload and we are going to save it into local storage. Let's see how can we do that. We are going to define here a login observable. This is going to be the observable that is going to produce our side effects and we are going to build it based on the actions observable. Let's call pipe on this observable and see how we are going to build this. The first thing that we need to do to produce a side effect in response to the login action is making sure that the login observable is only taking into account the login actions. Let's remember our application might have a lot more different action types. So in order to identify that this is the right action, we are going to be using the of type RxJS operator. That is part of the ngrx effects package. This operator takes here one parametric type, which is the type of the action that we are looking for. So in this case, this is going to be the login action. Next, what we want to specify here is what action type are we looking for. So let's go ahead and specify that we are filtering for the login action. Now that we know that we are in the case of the login action, let's go ahead and write the user data into local storage so that it survives refreshes. We're going to do that using the tap operator. So because we have specified here the login type in this parametric type of of type, we now know that we are receiving here our action as being an instance of the login action. So we can go ahead and store that directly into local storage. We're going to call set item on local storage. We're going to say that the key that we want to store in local storage is the key user and the data needs to be a string. This means that we cannot pass here as the second argument of set item directly the user from the action. We need instead to stringify this. So let's go ahead and call stringify here and stringify the user data. We are almost completed writing this side effect. We have not yet identified this observable as a source of side effects. So let's go ahead and do that using the effect decorator. Now, there are two types of side effects. There are certain side effects that produce as the result other actions. So we can imagine a side effect that takes one action, does a couple of requests to the database and gets back some data asynchronously and then sends it to the store by dispatching a second derived action. Or there are also other types of side effects like this one that don't produce any action. So in this case, storing the data in local storage is the side effect. If our side effect does not produce any action as a result, we need to inform NGRX effects of that using the dispatch false option. And with this, we have completed the implementation of our first NGRX side effect. We are responding here to login action and as a side effect, we are storing some of its data in local storage. Let's go ahead and implement some similar logic for logout. So whenever a user does a logout, we want to clear this data from local storage. As practice, let's now implement the logout side effect. We're going to go ahead and apply pipe here. We are going to filter for the type of action that we are looking for. So in this case, this is going to be the logout action. As usual, we are going to be specifying here a string that allows us to filter by action type. So we are specifically looking for the logout action and we're going to go ahead and clear local storage. So in the case of local storage, we are going to call here remove item 
and we are going to pass in here the key that we want to remove. In this case, it's the user string that identifies the key that we want to clear out. We also want to do something else other than clearing this entry from local storage. We want also to redirect the user to the login page. We are going to be turning this into a function block and we're going to be using the router to redirect the user. Let's go ahead then and inject the router here from Angular router and we are going to redirect the user. We are going to call this.router, navigate by URL and we are going to send the user to the login page. So if you remember, we had implemented this logic here before, here at the level of the application component, but this is a side effect. This is the type of thing that we want to put in a central place. In the case of this application, the logout is only present here in this button, but there could be other scenarios where we are logging out the user. We might detect that the session has expired and show a message, etc. So it's good to have this side effect outside of the component. The side effect is here in the effect class. Just like the case of the login effect, the logout effect does not dispatch any action. So let's also mark it with dispatch false. And with this, we have finished the implementation of our two first side effects. And we are going to dive a lot deeper into NGRX effects in this course. Right now, we are going to continue the implementation of our authentication functionality. We are going to make sure that the user is still logged in after the browser refreshes. For that, we are going to need a special type of side effect. 